Uber's former security chief Joseph Sullivan has been charged with covering up a hack that compromised the personal information of 57 million users and drivers. Allegedly, the ride-hailing company did not initially report the breach to the US Federal Trade Commission, but paid the hackers $100,000 in Bitcoin cryptocurrency in December 2016 as illegal hush money. The spokesperson for Sullivan told Bloomberg that there's no merit to the charges and that it was because of him and his team that the perpetrators were identified. Popular short form video app TikTok said that it has removed 380,000 videos and banned over 1,300 accounts in the US for violating its hate speech policies. The ByteDance owned company also took down 64,000 hateful comments. TikTok said in a blog post that it had acted on content that included race based harassment and on those that denied violent tragedies such as the Holocaust and slavery. Adobe has confirmed that the latest software update for its photo editing application Lightroom deletes all images from Apple iOS devices. Furthermore, photos stored locally on iPads and iPhones are gone permanently. But Adobe says there's no way to recover lost images and data. Adobe says that the glitch only affects users of Apple devices and that Android and desktop users are safe. It's worth noting that any images synced with the Lightroom cloud storage service prior to the update remain unaffected across all platforms. Major US news organizations are joining the growing number of companies that are seeking more favorable terms from Apple on commissions it collects from them on payments made through its App Store. In a letter to Apple CEO Tim Cook, a trade body representing The New York Times, The Washington Post, The Wall Street Journal and other publishers said the outlets want to know the conditions required to get them better deal terms, like the one offered to Amazon's Prime Video app. Apple usually takes a cut between 15% and 30% from news publishers for first-time subscriptions. A security bug that was identified and reported to Google in April has now been patched. Reported to have affected both Gmail and G Suite email servers, the bug could have allowed hackers to send spoof emails on behalf of Gmail and G Suite users. Alison Hussain, the security researcher that publicly disclosed the bug, said Google patched the flaw within seven hours of the news going public, despite planning to bring a fix sometime in September. Asus's 12GB RAM, 128GB storage model of its ultimate gaming smartphone, the ROG Phone 3, has gone on sale in India via Flipkart for 57,999 rupees. The base 8GB, 128GB variant costs 49,999 rupees. The smartphone features Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 865 Plus 5G chipset, paired with an overclocked Adreno 650 GPU, up to 512GB of UFS 3.1 storage, and 12GB of LPDDR5 RAM. The 6.59-inch AMOLED panel gets a lightning-fast 144Hz refresh rate, a 25ms touch latency, and a 270Hz touch sampling rate. There's also a 64 megapixel triple rear camera setup, a 24 megapixel selfie snapper, and a massive 6000 mAh battery that comes with a 30 watt fast charging adapter bundled in the box. According to tech news website Sam Mobile, Samsung is reportedly working on an affordable foldable smartphone for the masses. The device in development bears the model number SMF415, with the F suggesting a Galaxy Z series lineup and it is expected to come in a clamshell design. The report notes that the budget flip phone will come in 64GB and 128GB storage configurations and black, green and blue colorways. The Samsung Galaxy Z Flip is currently the cheapest Samsung foldable available for 1,8,999 rupees in India. Samsung has acknowledged some user reports that claim to have faced issues with the new Galaxy Note 20 Ultra's large camera bump. Over 100 members of Samsung's digital forums have reported issues they've noticed with the camera lenses and the rear camera bump. While some have pointed out dust or condensation inside the lenses, others have showed gaps between the lenses and the body of the phone. In response, Samsung has said condensation can occur in water-resistant smartphones when they're exposed to a sudden temperature change. It's worth noting that these concerns have been raised only by users in South Korea so far, so it's unclear whether the issues are limited to units in the country or if it's a widespread problem. 
Audio Accessories maker Boat has announced a new pair of affordable truly wireless earbuds in India, the AirDopes 131. They feature 13mm dynamic drivers and are powered by Bluetooth 5.0 for better range and faster connectivity, along with support for A2DP profiles. The earphones instantly connect with previously paired smartphones upon opening the lid of the charging case. Boat claims the earbuds can last 3 hours on a single charge and can keep playing a total of 15 hours with the case that comes with a USB-C port. The earbuds also come with a multifunction button to access your phone's voice assistant. The Boat AirDopes 131 earbuds cost 1,299 rupees and will be available via Flipkart from August 22nd. BlackBerry might be parting ways with TCL at the end of this month, but a new company, Onward Mobility, has taken up the mantle to revive the BlackBerry brand with good old-fashioned physical keyboards. The company has announced a partnership with BlackBerry and Foxconn subsidiary FIH Mobile to develop the new Android phone with 5G connectivity. The device is slated to be available in both Europe and North America sometime in the first half of 2021. The phones, according to Onward Mobility, will be targeted at governments and businesses working with valuable, sensitive data.